We're here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Today, we got a special guest, Derek Bell of SteelersNow.com, NFL draft expert, film analyst expert. We're going to go over his top 20 NFL draft wide receivers. I go back and forth with him about some different players. It's going to be a fun episode. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account right now and you can get tickets to whatever big events going on in your city. Use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. More on them later. As I said before, we're joined by Derek Bell, the man himself from SteelersNow.com. You can find him on Twitter at Steelers underscore DB and you can find him there and he gives a lot of takes. And Derek's been a guy who's been studying the field for quite some time. He's a guy you rely on for your film and analysis and now he's giving you his NFL draft analysis. We're going to break down his view into wide receivers. But first, Derek, how how you been, my man? Doing well, man. Yes, yeah, a busy time of year. You know, NFL draft, trying to finish up all these rankings of these positional groups. Uh, even though we've got, you know, a little bit of a slowed week uh, for the Steelers free agency stuff, you know, things have kind of died down on that front. But, you know, just a couple of weeks away from the NFL draft, it's going to be a really exciting weekend. You know, the Steelers have some capital now, been moving around the board, acquired some uh, some draft picks four in the top 100. So uh, a lot of needs and wide receivers, one of them, a lot of, a lot of really interesting players in this group. There absolutely are. It's a very deep class, a very talented it, the thing. There's it's, it's deep, but also top heavy because there's so much talent at, at the top. And so you can't call it top heavy, but it's just, it's loaded. And some people think this may be the best wide receiver class ever. Some think, say, say it's definitely just among the best ever either way. There's no doubt there. And I can also see this being one of the positions, if there is a position that the Steelers might double up on in this draft class because of the talent here. Uh, and and this will be like, you know, the top 20 receivers that we're going over here. This doesn't mean that these, you know, we, you know, doesn't mean that there aren't valuable guys past that, but this is just an early precursory look at like, Hey, who are, could, if the Steelers are looking in the top 100, if they're going to be looking at, you know, guys to get on the, in the first, second, third rounds, who are the primary options for them? So we're going to dig into Derek's rankings, which, by the way, you can read right now at SteelersNow.com. Bell ranking top wide receivers in the 2024 NFL draft. Now, I think we have the chalk leading off at the top, right? You know, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunes. Everybody knows those guys are top three. But you, sir, you and I share something in common here. The next guy we have on our list is Adonai Mitchell. Not everyone has him as the fourth guy. What makes Adonai Mitchell your like the, the next guy on the list after those top three? Yeah, I think the thing that stands out with A.D. Mitchell, man, you know, transfer from Georgia, went to Texas last year. Uh, just the way that he moves is very different for his size. You know, I, I kind of compared him to like a, a loose, you know, bucket getter. Like there's guys that you can just put out there on the perimeter that can get their own shot. Uh, kind of like, you know, your Allen Iversons in the NBA mm -hmm. world. Um, they don't need, you know, stacks. They don't need bunches. You don't have to put them in motion or anything like that. They can go one win one on one against practically anyone. And really, you saw A.D. Mitchell do that. You know, he gave Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama like a really difficult time, scored a touchdown on him. Um, but I, I just really like the route running ability, extremely flexible. Uh, this is a guy who tested extremely well. I think people were really sleeping on his athleticism, but uh, you could definitely tell on film that he has a top gear that's really, uh, you know, really impressive. He'll go over the middle. I think some of the concerns that, you know, are well founded with his game is, you know, he wasn't overly productive. You know, he was banged up at Georgia two years ago this past season at Texas. There was quarterback play issues that I think are not being discussed enough, uh, but also like. Just with with Mitchell, it's a question of can you get him to lock in on a play play to play basis? Um, mm. You know, if he's on the backside of the progression and he he knows he's not getting the football, he's not running full speed. Um, and that's just kind of you want to see like a little bit more focus, a little bit more attention to detail. But guys that can move like him are explosive like him in and out of his breaks at that size who can also high point the football. They're extremely valuable at a class that, you know, is really deep, but doesn't have at, at me 
uh, prototype kind of X receivers on the boundary, like the further down you get in the draft. I, I I feel you on that, and I just I'm like you. I think Adonai Mitchell can be a guy that wins on his own. I I do think he has plenty to refine, but just when I look at what he brings to the table as just raw talent and skills as a wide receiver, I'm you know Mike Tom and I've said this a few times this week now, but Mike Tom talks about running to coaching. You know, like say like you know what I'll take on the challenge of making that guy better because his tools are better than anybody else's, and, and not that his his tools are better than anybody else's, but I, I see him as the top, like the highest ceiling of all the guys that are, that are in that second tier and below after you talk about like the, the three guys that are basically looking like top 10 picks. But then after that, you get into, you get into the, the rest of your rankings here. You have uh, after Adam I Mitchell, Brian Thomas Jr. A lot of people talk about him for his size and his ability to just fly down the field, make big plays. Then you got another speedster and Xavier Worthy as your six. And then Lad McConkey is your seven. Troy Franklin as your eight. And then finishing out the top 10, you got Ricky Pearsall in Florida and Jalen McMillan in Washington. Of those guys, you got speedsters, you got deep ball guys, you got big play guys, you got route runners like Ladd McConkey. What do you think is the right fit for what the Steelers need right now at wide receiver? Does it matter what kind of talent they get or should they be looking for a route runner to replace Deontay Johnson? Yeah, that, that's been the question that I've been asking myself really over the past couple months, uh, or I guess, you know, a couple weeks since they traded Deontay Johnson is, you know, you look at the interest that they've showed, you know, at the combine, all the formal meetings with some of the top, you know, 50 type prospects on the consensus board. Uh, you look at some of the guys that they brought in for pre-draft visits, a guy like Ricky Pearsall comes to mind. Uh, what are they looking for? Are they looking for, like you said, a route runner that can replace Deontay Johnson one-to-one? I don't know that there's that type of player, um, you know, past the first round in this class uh, that can get off press coverage and, you know, win in isolation. But there are really good route runners. Like you talk about deep, deep ball specialists. There's guys that can go stretch the field vertically. There's also guys that win in the middle of the field. So it's kind of interesting to me. You know, I think we've all kind of talked about, you know, Arthur Smith's, you know, love for these big bodied wide receivers who can go over the middle, they'll block, do all these different things. But, you know, they've, they've showed interest in a lot of different, you know, archetypes. So I think figuring that out is going to be interesting, but, you know, day two is kind of a good sweet spot. If you're wanting to find like a wide receiver two caliber of player, it's really just a matter of, you know, what do they think is a really good fit next to, you know, George Pickens. I would prefer, I think the big thing for me is I think if they're going to take one, let's just say in the second round, I'd Mm -hmm. prefer somebody that has inside and outside versatility, just because I think that that is really valuable into the, like with the way that the NFL is moving, you want guys that, you know, you can take advantage of, you know, putting them in the slot, but they have to be able to block or you can split them outside to also do more of the traditional wide receiver stuff and, you know, get off press good enough and all that stuff. But uh, a lot of options available for sure. A lot more to talk about here with the wide receivers. We've just given you his top 10 here. Derek Bell of SteelersNow.com will keep going through. He has a top 20 list here, and we won't just go over these guys. We're going to talk more about compare and contrast some of the options here and who might be the best fits for the Steelers and when to make that move. All that here and more on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you of, 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 that this podcast is also sponsored by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar that you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is, is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply now for some legal information. Claim is of quarter one in 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for at least five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA, available to U.S. customers in good standing, Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer.
Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Derek Bell, NFL draft expert, film expert, all things football expert for SteelersNow.com. So, Derek, we went over the top 10, just a quick review. You know, you got you got the guys that everyone see, sees at the top, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roman Dunza, but then you got Adonai Mitchell at four, Brian Thomas at, at, at five, Xavier Worthy at six, Lad McConkey at Georgia at seven, Troy Franklin out of Oregon at eight, Ricky Pearsall at nine, and Jalen McMillan at 10. So after them, you start to dip into these next guys here. Xavier Le- Leggett, you're 11 at South Carolina. Jalen Polk, you're 12 at Washington. Javon Baker, 13 at UCF. And then Keon Coleman, 14 at Florida State. I, I There's a few of these guys I, I look at and like the different skill sets that each of them offers are all interesting. You know, I, I love Jalen Polk's ability to go up and get go up and get the ball. I love Javon Baker's, you know, he has a like a different a different skill set like that can get him open in different spot. And I think that he can has a kind of conglomeration of skills that makes him very interesting when I watch him at Central Florida. But looking at at these guys and a little bit of the other guys we just talked about, because I think once you get past like Xavier Worthy and Brian Thomas and Adonai Mitchell, you're starting to get into the the, the second round guys. Lad McConkey is a guy that some people put in the first round. But when you start getting to the Pearsalls and on through this group here, you're looking at second round guys. Which of these guys do you feel have, have the legitimate chance to be there at 51 and maybe be the Steelers' second round pick uh, as an option at wide receiver? You know, Ricky Pearsall was a guy that I was a lot higher on. I felt like in the consensus, you know, prior to him absolutely destroying the combine, you know, he tested like a freak. And I feel like a lot of people are kind of catching up in the mainstream media in terms of, um, you know, where he should proper, properly be ranked. Uh, but a really interesting player, you know, excellent body control. He's awesome over the middle. Uh, hands are fantastic. I want to say he only had like two drops last season. Really a competent player in terms of like snagging the ball away from his frame. So I love that about him. And he's also like a really snappy route runner, like understands how to find space and zone. There's just a lot to like about his game. And then um, on top of, you know, excellent testing numbers. And then, you know, the guy that uh, the other guy that I would say that they, you know, have shown interest in, um, you know, Xavier Leggett, guy that has a top 30 uh, reported visit to Pittsburgh. He makes a lot of sense for them. Right. Like we talked about Arthur Smith's propensity to, to target these bigger bodied wide receivers, but also guys that can run. And I think Leggett is definitely, you know, falls under that category. Leggett has all of the things that you necessarily can't teach a wide receiver to do. You know, he's a, mm. got a really dense frame. He's, you know, six one, So he has good size, but he's 220 pounds, but he, he moves like a guy in straight line instances, like he's 180. Uh, he can absolutely fly. The leaping ability just jumps off the tape. Like he was excellent. And, um, jump ball situations uh, last year. He can just hang in the air for however long he wants. And then I think the big thing with him that kind of makes me intrigued with his fit within the Steelers offense is just, you know, he was devastating on crossers last year. I mean, you just look Mm -hmm. at some of the numbers on crossing routes and, you know, he was absolutely dominant. He had 15 catches, 437 yards and two touchdowns. He took a 76 yard drag route to the crib against, uh, I think it was Mississippi state last year. Um, so there's a lot to like with his game. He's just really raw and unrefined as a route runner. So you have to be careful about how much you're putting on his plate as a rookie. Absolutely. And that's part of the, the balance here for overall, right? Is like, you know, whoever you're getting here, you're they're coming in with the understanding that like, hey, you're probably going to play a lot, but mm-hmm. you don't have to be the primary option. The Steelers do have George Pickens. And, and that's why I think it's kind of interesting because it kind of plays into what type of receiver do you want to get? You know, we know that they've you know brought in guys like Van Jefferson and, and Cordero Patterson, but none of those guys are definite number two wide receivers. We you know I've been thinking for a while that they might get a Tyler Boyd. And that's a guy that could be that player, you know, or be the number three if you drafted a wide receiver high. So. You know, but they, that hasn't happened. So now you're kind of in a position where you probably need a guy that can play as the number two wide receiver and take on that role. How quickly can they adjust to the NFL in, in that spot? And I think that could be, uh, you know, another part of the conversation. Before we continue down your list here, I want to ask who, what is the situation where the Steelers run to the podium and just take a receiver at 20? Is it Adonai Mitchell? You know, if he falls there, uh, you know, and, you know, certain offensive tackles are off the board, but is there a scenario where you do see the Steelers taking a wide receiver first, or is this a day two type of pick? Yeah. I mean, receiver is a premium position. And I, I think that, you know, if they address it at 20, it, you just can't, you can't complain. You won't see any complaint out of that from me. Um, but I think, Adonai Mitchell, to me, is the most Steelers receiver of all time. Uh, You talked about, like, Mike Tomlin and, you know, his running to coaching approach. Tomlin's got the most out of a lot of 
these types of players, right? Guys mm -hmm. that are extremely talented, but, you know, you just need them to focus a little bit more. You need a little bit more consistency, but, you know, the sky's the limit and they'll take chances on guys like that. And I think, you know, A.D. Mitchell with the way that he moves, how good of a route runner he is already. Um, you know, I think that he's a he's a home run pick for me. I'm extremely high on him. He's got a true first round grade for me. Brian Thomas Jr. would be the other guy that I think would be potentially available at that point in the draft where I would definitely see the vision. With Thomas, um, Thomas was, you know, you talk about Leggett and those crossing routes. Thomas was dominant last year as a vertical threat in that LSU mm -hmm. offense. I mean, um, he had over 500 yards and 10 touchdowns just on like streaks, like just fade balls, go balls down the down the field. Excellent acceleration. Another height, weight, speed guy. A lot of things that you can't teach with his profile. And I think he got better against press coverage, which is a big thing in terms of, you know, at the next level where he won't be seeing as much free access. So um, he's another guy that I think if they took him at 20, I think that that's a good selection. With the glaring needs at receiver, like you mentioned, they didn't they weren't able to get, you know, Tyler Boyd in the building to a contract. And then but also the glaring need at center, I think, you know, and they would probably like to upgrade a tackle. So they've got a couple needs right now in balance and how they're going to fill those is going to be really interesting. Yeah, I think that that's where I think it, it begins. It's really fun to talk about the different prospects here. And that's the other thing about this is that there's so many talented wide receivers coming into the NFL draft every year. Like, like I, I don't remember the last time that we looked at it and said, man, it's a boring year for wide receivers because there's just there's just so many that come out every year. And in college, I mean, every year you're turning it, you're turning on tape, you're turning on Saturdays and you're like, oh, well, that guy's really amazing like he can fly oh, yeah. down the field and make ridiculous one-handed catches and, and and break and break loose for big play um you know we know the Steelers brought in the quote-unquote yak king and Malachi Corley um you know re re recently um so you know they continue to look at guys that could be available there finishing out your list before we keep talking out you have uh we stopped at 14 you have 15 is Jermaine Burton out of Alabama 16 is Roman Wilson out of Michigan 17 is Devontae Walker out of North Carolina Malik Washington another an undersized guy out of Virginia Malachi Corley the guy who was brought in recently uh is your 19th guy at Western Kentucky and your final guy in your top 20 is Jamari Thrash out of, out of Louisville but all that being being said here, um, I think it's interesting, again, to look back at who you want to fit into your system. And you talked about Arthur Smith and what he likes to do as an offense. Now, I, again, I tell people, like, I don't – I look at what happened in Atlanta and say, like, okay, like, you have to take that into account with who Arthur Smith is. But I don't think that the Steelers' offense is going to resemble much of what they did, did, did there, more so than it will try – that at least they'll try to make it resemble – what actually happened in Tennessee in the two years he was there. But when I tell people that, and Alan Saunders brings this up, is, hey, like, the Steelers don't need three star receivers in this offense. They need a really talented offensive line. They need a dominant run game, you know, probably a decent tight end, and they've got that in, in Pat Fryermuth, and maybe one really good wide receiver with two, like, decent ones here. And I th I hear that. But when you look at this cl at, at this class, Derek, the value I, I think is still there, even if the Steelers don't get him in the second. Is the, do you see any of these top twenty guys slipping down into that third round range where the Steelers could take them there, and then that way they've invested maybe their first round pick and tackle and their second round pick at center. Yeah, I think a guy that I have ranked ahead of where I think a lot of people do is Jalen McMillan from Washington. Uh, mm. You know, he's like if you look at like the consensus board which takes other people's big boards and mocks in the media and kind of puts them all together. But McMillan's a guy I think that's getting, you know, date or round three buzz, uh, barely a top 100. I have him ranked uh, right inside of my top 50. So he's a guy that I think if you go back to the 2022 tape, extremely productive, man. Like he was, he was a really key cog in that Washington offense. He, you know, was a, Excellent slot receiver, uh, really good on option routes underneath, but you give him a free runway, he understands how to get safeties turned around on these double moves and deep shot plays. Um, I think there's enough inside-outside versatility there to where I would be comfortable with him on the outside. He played on the outside a little bit in 2021, um, but extremely good route runner. Like I said, understands how to separate, and I value that a lot um, when I'm looking at these receivers. He was just banged up last season, which I think has uh, caused people to kind of go a little bit cold on him. You mentioned Jalen Polk earlier, his teammate from Washington. That's another guy. Like I, I put his kind of blurb on there about you know him being just kind of like this jack-of-all-trades but master-of-none type of player. Does Really overwhelming uh, athleticism or overwhelming um, trump card on on tape, uh, but extremely good hands. Like plays well through contact. He's just a really well rounded receiver that I could see being a guy that's like a top end like wide receiver three 
um, at the next level. But there's a lot of good players, um, you know, at the further down you get in the draft. I just think it's a conversation of can you because once you get into the day two part, we talk about coaching. There's yeah. going to be significant things that these guys are going to have to work on. I mean, they're, they're rookies. They're coming out of college, a completely different environment where there's a lot of um, a lot of difference in the way that the game's played at the college level. So you're going to have to teach these guys on the fly. And like the Steelers have kind of backed themselves into a corner where they they need a number two wide receiver. There's just not one on the roster right now. So like you said, they're they're going to be anticipating these guys are playing day one and a lot of snaps. Yeah, I'm right with you there. And I think it's going to be interesting to continue to look at that. I want to talk more about the market for wide receivers with Derek, especially with we're talking about this being one of the best classes, most talented classes of wide receivers that has that has come out in, in a long time. Um, how does that fit with where the NFL is? We'll do discuss that and the big trade that was in the NFL uh, yesterday, all here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Chris Carter, Derek Bell, stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, we'll remind you this show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app you can download right to your phone right now to buy tickets to all your favorite events without it being stressful. You can also go to the website GameTime.co, but Game Time is the, is the place that you need to go to for fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They give you killer deals on last-minute tickets and even up, give you tickets up to an hour after the event has started. And they have a best price guarantee that can't be beat, so you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're about to have. The Game Time app allows you to book tickets up to the last minute, and if you didn't plan on far out Advanced, that's fine. Even if you're running to it up to an hour late, they're helping you find the best, the best of both worlds. One, you're gonna get the best price, and two, you can go into the game to map and see what the view is from your seat, so that you know that you're not getting scammed out, out, out of your money. You're getting great bang for your buck and a great value. And with the best price guarantee, Game Time promise you, if you get tickets from them, but you find tickets somewhere else in the same section, the same row for less, Game Time will credit you 110 percent of the difference of those prices. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game to Map, create an account, and use code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase or go to their website, gametime.co. Terms and conditions apply. Create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're also brought to you by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. And it's also what keeps keeps your ride or die alive. eBay's Mo- eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it's time to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Get your, get your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter here with Derek Bell of SteelersNow.com. All right, Derek, let's get into what became the blockbuster move of the day that shook the NFL world. Uh, and and I, I mean that seriously with all the things that happened in this in in this uh, in this trade. So the Buffalo Bills send away Stephon Diggs after years of wondering if he was done in Buffalo. It seemed like it was a, a yearly thing. Oh, he's done. He doesn't want to be here anymore. Then he'd be back and everything was fine. But now he's been sent to the Houston Texans for a second round pick in 2025. Not even in the 2024 draft, but in 2025. The Texans also get the Bills 2025 fifth and sixth round picks. And that is... Also coming with a big cap loss that's gonna hit that's gonna hit the bills. Derek, it is insane to me that in today's NFL world, just a little over a year ago, the Steelers got better compensation for Chase Claypool than the Bills just got for Stephon Diggs. And I think part of this is people are starting to realize the best receiving rooms in the NFL right now are built around one superstar who's in their prime that you can pay that big money to, and then a smattering of young guys that you've hoped that you've hit on in the draft or veterans that you're not paying a whole lot for who are kind of giving you, you know, fit in certain roles for you. This to me is, I, I think this is very much driven by the fact that the bills are like, look, we're paying Stefan all this money. We need to, we need to start, we need to start cutting back there and we need to start investing in other parts of the team. 
And guess what? This is a great wide receiver class. We're going to go hard there. What did this trade tell you about the wide receiver market and what wide receiver position is changed, how that's changing in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I think it seems like to me just on paper, like looking through the details that, you know, the Bills, they're – they had to be tired of digs, man. Like there, there has to be something behind the scenes that, you know, we've talked about like the, the cryptic tweets and digs right. always doing that every off season and things like that. But, you know, his production slowed down at the second half of last year. Maybe they were just trying to get in front of this a little bit. You know, he is over 30 years old. Now you talked about receivers, you know, kind of in their prime. And I think that digs is probably, you know, at the tail end of his prime, even though he's still a really good player, a very good route runner. I think it signals a shift to where like Buffalo could be potentially going on offense. You know, we probably going to see more under center, some more play action, some more mm. quarterback friendly stuff instead of as much like spread. Um, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the NFL offenses are doing right now. They drafted Dalton Kincaid in the first one last year, a guy that I really like. He has the receiving capabilities at the tight end position to where you can kind of uh, funnel a ton of targets his way. I expect him to have a big sophomore season. Uh, but like you said, man, like the NFL, I think that, you know, it's it was kind of I don't want to say like it's an A B situation 2.0, but when you're willing to trade a guy, take on you know 30 million dollars in dead cap hit and only get a second round pick for the year after, which is typically like what they say is like a second round pick uh right. next year is really like a third round pick in this year's draft, is like mm -hmm. typically how people describe it. If you're willing to do all that, man, like there's gotta be some stuff behind the scenes going on. Like you said, the Claypool trade, man, I think. Khan deserves a statue for that. I don't know. How, I still to this day do still not understand how. how Ryan Poles got finessed like that. But, um, but yeah, the receiver market is it's weird. There's a couple good, uh, really interesting names uh, still out there too. Absolutely, and I wonder if there's other trades that are going to be made there very soon. And to your point about Diggs, the Bills. At one point, people forget like the Bills were on the cusp of just being pushed out the playoffs. Like they, it, things were not looking good, especially after their loss to the Eagles. Uh, I think they might have even been like on the cusp of either having a losing record or no, yeah, I think they did have a losing record at the time. Uh, you know, or at least they were 500. I think they were 500 when they when they lost to the Eagles in Week 12, and then they won five straight. But in those five straight wins, they really didn't need Stephon Diggs that much. He had 24 yards, 48 yards, 29 yards, 26 yards. He did have 87 yards against the Dolphins in the, in the regular season finale, and he scored no touchdowns. And then against the Steelers, seven catches, 52 yards, no touchdowns. You know, I, I guess, you know, that, 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 that's fine. Um, and then he had 21 yards. Against, they really didn't use him in the, in the big run that they had to get to the playoffs and then get up against the Chiefs again in what was a close affair there. To me, that maybe that's a sign that the Bills are like, hey, Josh Allen can make this work with a lot of different people, and we can we can draft talented wide receivers that can do you know what Stephon Diggs did or better, and then use our money in the near future to maybe invest more in the offensive line or invest more and more in the defense and make this more of a complete roster when you have that franchise quarterback. You know, that's a challenge the Steelers just got out of, you know, after having Ben Roethlisberger for 20 years. You know, that's that's and whereas it's a blessing, it's also the natural challenge that comes with it when you have one of the best quarterbacks in football. So that's where I, I think it's interesting with Stephon Diggs is that sh when he's with CJ Stroud, good Lord, what's going to happen with the Texans? Who, who knows about that? But um, I, I look at this and I think that this is another sign that like, hey, if you're not a top eight wide receiver in the NFL, because I think it's bigger than top five. But if you're not like in that top eight echelon where like, you know, you are the dominant wide receiver on, on your team and undisputed in that conversation of being an all pro wide receiver, this that you are you are, are in danger of being moved unless you're like on a really good contract with the team, because if I'm a GM right now, I need either, you know, the, the Tyreek Hill or the Justin Jefferson or the Jamar Chase uh, delivering for me to, if I want to pay you that, that that super wide receiver money so that you are that star receiver. And then, you know what, around you, I'll get I'll draft a Gabe Davis in the fourth round. I'll I'll go and get, you know, we're looking at this like a Malachi Corley. And then if there's less pressure on having to hit you know, there, there's there's less pressure on having to pay those other guys because you have that star guy and digs just. He's not that anymore. He's still very talented. Still has a future in the NFL. He's just not that anymore. And and also like think too with with Joe Brady, you know, taking over. You mentioned like the run they went on last year. You know that mm -hmm. was fostered by an offensive coordinator change. They they switched offensive coordinators, switched systems. Uh, Joe Brady from that you know kind of Saints LSU kind of mold, uh, the Sean Payton world, if you will. And 
I think that, you know, he probably just has a different vision for how he wants the offense to look. And, you know, I, I expect that there were conversations around like, okay, how are we going to build this without Diggs being machine and um, I think that that even goes back to last year like I said with the Kincaid selection I think they had a vision for what this thing could look like could Kincaid be their de facto number one type of passing option down the road like kind of like what the Chiefs have kind of settled into over the last couple of years uh, with Travis Kelsey not saying that he's that caliber of player yet um, but maybe you use a receiving tight end allows you to be a little more flexible. Kincaid's kind of a guy that can work in the slot as well. But I do think that the Bills are going to be aggressive on draft weekend to try to secure one of these wide receivers in the first round. Uh, maybe potentially even like maybe they move one of their pieces for next year, um, a draft pick to kind of get up further into that, you know, maybe 10, maybe top 10, top 12 range. Uh, just in case maybe like Roma Dunze were to fall to like nine or 10, I think they would be interested in trading up there. But um, yeah, it, it is interesting because I, I think we all kind of acknowledge, you know, with Josh Allen having a superstar quarterback, they, they're they kind of always going to be pushing the chips in to try to win, try to win. And, um, you know, moving a guy with this much, you know, this much of a resume is just, it is kind of a little bit of a shock uh, to me, especially with the dead money and all that stuff. So a uh, very interesting situation. All right. One last look at your top 20 that you can read now at SteelersNow.com. We've read through the rankings here. If you're Omar Khan, you're the Steelers GM, your best value of getting a realistic guy here on the board, who is the guy you think, I'll even give you some wiggle room. Give me the three guys who you think are the best fits for what the Steelers absolutely need in Arthur Smith's offense in 2024. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm going to go back to, you know, I'm going to go back to A.D. Mitchell. That's that's number one Ooh. for me. I just I, I'm I'm fully I'm so confident that his game translates to the next level. Uh, just with the route running, the combination of size and speed, I just think that, you know, his game is so easily translatable to the next level as long as he's locked in. I, I have a lot of faith in Mike Tomlin to get the best out of somebody like this. And I think that this is the perfect landing spot um, for him. Now, I, if you had to ask me, like, the other two guys, maybe like some day two guys that I think yes. would be nice fits, I'm going to go back to Pearsall and look at, I think that if you're talking about taking a receiver at 51, I would say that those two guys are at the top of the list. Pearsall. Love the hands, snappy route runner, um, just very quarterback friendly in a lot of regards. Um, and then Leggett, I think you're just banking on the traits, man. Like uh, we've seen the Steelers make some um, decisions in the draft to bet on athleticism and, you know, try to round, round out their games. But I even think just with Leggett, his straight line speed and leaping ability, like you're going to be able to use him on shot plays on, off all those like play action boots and, you know, the two man route concepts that Arthur Smith likes to likes to work with. And I just think you get him down the field. You you don't make him do too much as a rookie. Don't ask him to run the full route tree. Um, but I still think he can provide a lot of explosive plays and he's you know got some uh, promise after the catch as well. So I'll say those three guys are probably the, the three that I'm most keyed in on uh, draft weekend. That's that sounds exciting. I, I I honestly think I love Ed and I Mitchell. I love his tape. I, I've I've said it for for a bit. Like he is, he's one of my favorites in this draft class as far as just what he could bring to the table. I think he could be a complete guy. I think he can end up being a number one guy, and that what is really enti really enticing about this, Derek. Because imagine imagine this scenario. Net this year, him and Pickens just go off like like, like let's let's say they pick him. And they 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 figure out the offensive line after that, and and the offensive line's solid. But you have a dynamic one-two punch at wide receiver, and then George Pickens is reaching the end of his rookie deal, and you're not as pressed as the Pittsburgh Steelers to have to pay him the super money to sure. do that. You can say, you know what? Who likes George Pickens? Because you know what? He is a number one wide receiver who's going to be who's in his prime, who's very young. And I think he attracts a lot more of attention than what Stephon Diggs do, did in this past draft because of his youth and how you could lock him in for quite for you know the uh, over the next you know to the end of the decade as as your star wide receiver if you know you got Adonai Mitchell and if that worked out and again that's a, a lot of hypotheticals but I think that is a prospect of getting one of these top end wide receivers and that they end up working out that could give the Steelers the extra push because let's say you know that happens. So uh, Pickens' contract is up in 2026. 20, it's after the 2025 season. Yeah, this year, 2024. Then the year after that, 2025, that's his last year on his rookie deal. That's right around the time 
when the Steelers could use some draft capital if A, Russell Wilson isn't isn't still around and B, Justin Fields don't work out to go up and get a quarterback. So a and also, lot of that adds up there. And you 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 brought up a point earlier. You know, I think that it's been well reported that, you know, Arthur Smith's offense, like they don't he doesn't use a lot of 11 personnel. He likes to right. just put 12 personnel uh, and really work everything off the wide zone run game. And I, I do agree, like he's had success, you know, in Tennessee with that philosophy. Things didn't really necessarily work out as consistently in Atlanta. But I think, you know, people are almost not seeing the full picture there. Like what? Like, yes, this offense may not require two extremely good receivers. But what could it be if you had two good receivers? Like, what could it be if you had somebody <laughs> that ended up developing into like one of those one A, one B situations like Adonai Mitchell to me? Like I said, if he's locked in and laser focused and you can get the best out of him, there's there's no reason that he can't be a number one wide receiver at the next level. Like, I fully believe that guys that can separate like that, run routes and get open. Um, that's the number one thing that I look for in a, in a receiver prospect. How often are you open? Because quarterbacks like throwing the ball to open right. players. That's like people always wonder why. Deontay Johnson would get 150 targets. Well, the dude's always separating. He's getting open at the break point. He's always open. Mm -hmm. That's that's where quarterbacks tend to go with the football at the NFL level. So I'm extremely high on Mitchell. Um, I'm willing to, you know, bang the table for him. And I think that, you know, even him at 20, uh, sign, sign, sign me up for that. Absolutely. He's Derek Bell of SteelersNow.com. Um, Derek, thanks so much for joining us here. Remember to read his twenty his top twenty wide receivers article. It's on SteelersNow.com. Derek, let people can find you, follow you, get more of your work, and what else you might have coming up in store. Yeah, uh, at Steelers underscore DB on Twitter slash X, and then all my written work is on Steelers Now. Tons of draft content uh, coming your way. I'll definitely be tuned into the Locked On podcast. I appreciate you uh, for having me on, Cart. Absolutely, Derek. He's Derek Bell. I'm Chris Carter. I host the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can find me here every day, Monday through Friday, on the Locked On Steelers podcast, on your favorite podcasting apps, and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel to get all of our daily episodes. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, post gazette.com. Bob Carrington for the Pitt Panthers declared for the NBA draft. The story there at post gazette.com if you want more on how that what all led into that decision. We're back tomorrow with more on your Pittsburgh Steelers right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast.